welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. Welcome back to episode... don't know. <laughs> Can't remember. But uh, hello to my regular viewers and hello to anybody new. This is primarily a knitting podcast but I do also talk about sewing. And um, today I will be talking about sewing because I made this dress. So if you're not interested in sewing then skip ahead using the timestamps below. So let's get to it. Um, I'll start with my what I'm wearing sewing so that we'll then go straight into the knitting. I have my notes. Okay, so I'll try and insert a video of this. Don't think you'll see it so well here. <coughs> Sorry. This is a mashup. Ideally, I wanted to make the hinterland dress and I thought it was so beautiful and then I tried to make it. If you've seen my podcast before, then you'll see that I made a, a dress with bees on it, but it's really tight and I did the right size. The apparent measurements should be right and they just aren't. I have my seam allowances, they're fine, everything's fine, but it doesn't fit. So I made two mock-ups. I have them behind me, I should have, well behind you, <laughs> I should have brought them over. But basically I then made the size up and then I did the size up and it's still so tight and I don't understand. <laughs> so I also wanted to make the Rosa dress by Rosary Apparel but I decided I'd mash them together because the Rosary Apparel dress has a zip up the back and I really like the fact that the hinterland is apparently loose so you just pop it over your head and tie it up and you're good to go and no fastenings so originally I did the rose dress and then the neckline was so tight that I couldn't actually get it over my head so what I did was I mashed up the hinterland bodice so I took the rosary bodice with the armholes because that was the main issue in my hinterland, was that every time I did this, the whole dress went up. It was very annoying. So I used the bodice, then I'm trying to remember here, I used the neckline of the hinterland for this one. And it's a little bit loose, but I'm not sure why. Maybe I should take this off so you can see. Yeah, it's a little bit loose here, but I think that was my um, bias, sorry. The hinterland has a bias facing and the rose dress has a normal fabric facing. But because I'd already tried with this other fabric and it came out wrong, I didn't want to waste this fabric on it. So I just did a bias. I did the armholes from the rose dress, which is so much better. The only thing I've noticed is that they do come off slightly further than I think normal shoulders come off the body. I'm always confused where the end of the shoulder is. Like, is it that bone there or is it the slope that goes there? Um, gosh, I'm really slouching. <laughs> so I much prefer this um, armhole situation. When I saw the pattern pieces, the hinterland one's like this big and the rose dress is like <laughs> this. So there's obvious reason why uh, it's a lot better fitting for me. Which is weird because I'm pretty small, so I find it strange that I need such a big pattern piece, and it's fine. Anyway, what else? I mashed up that, bust is the same. Oh, and the because the rose dress has a zip, it is more nipped in at the waist. But I didn't want that, so I added these um, waist ties, and they are from the hinterland dress. So I graded out the bodice. So instead of being, I think it was extra small, I graded it out to about a medium of the waist. I think it was a centimetre on each side. I can't remember. It's all written on my pattern pieces so I can make this again. And yeah, then I added these ties, which I think I put a little bit too high up. But they're fine. <laughs> um, the fabric I got on sale from Stoffer. No? either stoffer.de or mokstofferei I have to look that up but look at it, it's got little kangaroos and it is a cotton 
and no matter how much I iron and steam it, it just doesn't release the crinkle. So I think I've got some uh, more ironing to do. I don't know. I'm not very good at ironing, but eventually I'll learn. But it's fine. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> what else? It's got some pockets. Um, and it's just, just about at my knee. I think, I think that is all I have to say. Let me check my notes. Armhole sleeves, graded out the waist, yeah. That is everything with this. So I want to make another one. I have a box of fabric here and I bought some fabric when I first started to sew. I was very optimistic. I thought I will make a perfect dress the first time I ever sew back in 2020. Unsurprisingly, I did not. And fabric stayed there. Then it turned into something else. Then in 2021, I wanted to make a birthday dress, but then the fabric didn't show up. So I didn't. This year, this is the year I'm going to make the birthday dress. So my birthday is March 6th. So hopefully I will have the dress made by then. I'm not sure if I need to make any adjustments to this. I really don't want to because it took me so long to figure this out. So I think it's okay. Problem is I'm quite self-critical. So when I look at it, I can look at all the things that should probably be changed. And um, I'm not a dressmaker. I've never done any courses. I, like, I don't know how to adjust it. The fact that it's all put together and wearable, that should be a success in itself. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> sewing complete. I will now put back on my cardigan. This is, what is this? <laughs> this is the Joy cardigan. When my mum visit, visited me, I think in 2019, it could have been 2018, we went to Yarn Over Berlin and they had this beautiful yarn everywhere and these, um, what are they, what do you call them? Like, garments that are knit up to show what you can make with the yarn and they had the liner magazines so they took patterns from them and made them and showed what you could use the yarn for. Back then I didn't know how to knit and my mum was the knitter so we went there because of her and I saw a couple of projects that I really loved. This one, this pattern was one of them. Um, let me show you the book precariously balancing things here. So this one is the Joy cardigan from Liner 9 and it's by Renee Callahan. I did actually put a um, page marker but it fell out. <laughs> okay, let's see. Otherwise I'll put a um, picture in. Now, when I got this magazine, I went half seas with my mum, but uh, since she hasn't been here in two years, she still hasn't been able to look at this. So when she hopefully visits, hopefully, hopefully this year, uh, she'll actually be able to uh, take this home and look at it. She, um, no, not she. I. I saw that cardigan pattern and I took a picture of it in Yarn Over Berlin and then when I started to knit, I knitted the very first thing which you will see in my first episode on here. Um, that one was a leaf top. That was my first knitted garment. And once I did that, I was like, yes, I can do this, I'm going to make this cardigan. I had absolutely no idea about yarn, nothing, gauge, needles, no, none of that. Didn't have a clue. I went to a local store here during the very beginning of the pandemic, just before everything shut, and you had to go in like one person at a time. And I got these really cheap, not even bamboo, just like cheap wooden needles. There was a big set of them, and they're over there, but they're hidden amongst things. So I bought that, and then I bought this yarn because it was on sale on a website, and I think it's Lana Grossa. So merino, and I just bought it because I like the colour. <laughs> I had no idea, to be honest. 
unsurprisingly, it doesn't look like the picture. I don't actually know what size she's wearing. I just chose the size that was the smallest. I think it says it's a 37 inch finished object. The yarn that is recommended looks beautiful, but it was really, really expensive and it came from America and I couldn't afford it and I didn't know how to knit. <laughs> well, I just learned. Um, so I just bought this one and I think it was something like three euro ball and I had about nine or 12 balls or something. So got that and I never blocked it because I never knew about blocking and I blocked it about a month ago, maybe two months ago, uh, because I just never wore it. So I eventually blocked it, so I've got hair in my eye. I eventually blocked it and it's much softer now. And I've never checked the gauge until this morning, <laughs> just before recording, I thought, huh, I actually have no idea in what size this has come out. So the recommended gauge was 17 stitches and it's like a DK weight. And mine is between 18 and 19, depending where you uh, measure it, which is one of my big issues with swatching, because no matter where I put my uh, measuring tape or measuring thing, I always get a different read. So if you have to do another swatch just to go down one uh, knit stitch, it makes no sense to me, because if you move it up a little bit, I've already got that count. Anyway. Basically, it's come out smaller than the picture in the magazine, but she could be wearing a size medium or size large, I don't know. It's not like I don't like it, but it isn't the cardigan that I wanted. But, I don't know how much you'll see. It's got this cross stitch pattern. And I remember doing it and thinking, how on earth am I going to do this? This is all going to fall apart because it's some crazy stitch that like you wrap around and then you unravel it all and you think oh, I've just made a hole in my knitting and then you pick it up and somehow it magically turns into this. The other weird thing was when you cast this on, you, you cast on three stitches and uh, you do an I-cord and I think, I think the I-cord starts from here and then you go all the way up and at some point you then go onto the shoulder and then from the shoulder it ends up merging into the body. It is knitted in, is it in pieces? It's knitted flat <laughs> and then the, the sleeves and um, mattress stitched on. So it was quite an interesting garment as my first one. Like I. No idea <laughs> what I was doing, but I would like in one way to do this again and I'd actually love to do it in the yarn that is recommended, but I never wear this cardigan. I don't know when to wear it. If I'm warm enough, like, how do I phrase this? If it's cold and it's cold enough to get a cardigan, then I want to do it up, but I can't. So if I go out and it's windy or it's cold, then this whole section of my body is cold. So then I would just put on a jumper or a cardigan that has buttons. But then if it's warm enough that I don't need that, then I'm kind of too warm to wear this. <laughs> um, and yeah, and also it just has a bit of a weird, I don't know, doesn't, doesn't sit nicely on me, I don't think. It kind of looks a bit, it's like half, oversized and half too small. I don't know, I have mixed feelings. But when I made this dress, I thought this cardigan should go with that. <laughs> oh, I'm really not, <laughs> not doing well getting on and off this chair. Also, my throat has decided it needs water. So anything else? I have a few sections where I have a random pearl stitch, just all the stock in it and then a pearl. And I also learned how to, uh, learned, I didn't really learn, when I did my, um, gosh, were, when I wove in my ends, I had no idea what I was doing. And this massive section right at the very front has 
me weaving in my ends and it comes straight out on the wrong on the right side but anyway I'm still very proud of myself that I did this if any one of you guys have made this I would love to see what yours looks like and what yarns you used get some inspiration and then maybe maybe I'll make it again because <laughs> I remember I did enjoy it and I'd also change this I really don't like really long ribs ribs ribbed sleeves um, I can fold it up but yeah. anywho yeah mixed feelings but I thought I'd wear it show you guys my first cardigan that I ever made okay so finished objects if you have watched my uh, Instagram stories then you will have seen this I made a reel I still don't understand them I feel very out of date with technology but I did a reel <laughs> um, and I finished my framework bralette uh, I made this framework bralette and it's by Jessie Made Designs and I love it look at it look at those colours oh so in love last year my mum sent me oh I've got a cushion going right up the back of my dress my mum sent me this yarn from, she lives in Pembrokeshire, I thought she was Welsh, but um, Carrick Wen Crafts, and it was this beautiful skein of yellow loveliness, and then I got my um, Swift and Ball Winder at Christmas, so I finally wound it up into a ball, I, I could have done it on the back of my chair, but I didn't have a project in mind, and then when my lovely Christmas presents arrived, then I knew I can do my ball and then I can turn it into something and I had this pattern so I went with this. Originally I cast on the smallest size and it just looked so small. It did not look like it was going to fit and I think I got, I got past the rib and up to maybe four rounds and I thought no, it's not going to go over my head. So I ripped it all out and I went up to the second smallest. It does stretch out quite a lot across my chest, but not too much. It could probably, it could probably have gone up another size, but I kept reading everywhere that Superwash Merino would stretch out and it would, it grows a lot and that the pattern, you should really go down a size and not up if you think, mm, should I, should I not, you should go down and that's what I did. But I think I could probably have gone up. And I did just check my gauge because I didn't check it at any point. <laughs> and what is it? It should be 20 stitches and I got, again, 18 or 19, give or take. So it came out, what, it actually came out slightly bigger. So, yeah. But if it's, if it's, and um, it's warm, and weirdly, it's kind of scratchy. It's a superwash merino, and I can wear plutolopi and netlopi against my skin, no problem. But this one, which is meant to be like super soft merino, I'm like, eh. But I got used to it over the day. And I really, really like it. I really like, love the colour, because the weather is pants. It's really windy and cold and raining. So this is like my little sunshine ray of loveliness. It strangely took me longer than I expected. I got into a bit of a slump with my um, jumper that I'll talk about in a minute uh, because it's just stuck in it like round and round and round and it just ne it was never ending and I wanted to see some progress and I also wanted to make something with this yarn. So. I thought oh, I'll be done in like two days because that's how long everyone else takes when they talk about it and I think mine was about a week <laughs> but to be honest I think it was more my hand pain for some reason although there's it looks like a lot of purling but actually you knit it inside out so you knit it and then once you get to the bra top you then turn it inside out and then you work backwards and forwards but the rest of it's in the round so there's only a little bit of purling but the movement of just like that, even now, I can feel like ding, ding. 
So yeah, I'm still having issues with purling, but I did eventually get there, and I love it. So that's my finished object, and I have what else? I have a half finished object slash whip, which I don't know if you can see on the camera. Here's these. These are my little acorn socks by Stone Nymphs. I originally cast them on in this beige colour and did the whole um, body to the squirrels. But you could see all of the floats like, poking out really visibly. And that happened to me before when I used this yarn, this um, beige one. You could just see everything. And it was really frustrating. And I also, when I got to the, uh, at the end of Magic Loop, I think I pulled too tight or on one of them. Like, I made sure my floats were loose. But then when I got to the end, I pulled a bit too tight and there was just one, just one piece of yarn that stuck out when you looked, if you opened it up and looked in to stretch it out and I couldn't get my foot in. I was very raged. <laughs> so I had to rip out the whole of this section. I left this part, then I decided I'm giving up, I'm not using that yarn. And I found this yarn that my mum was given and she was given it a good while ago. And I think the person who she got it from was given it. It's um, a very cheap yarn. It's King Cole and I zigzag. No idea of the colour, but it's this colour. No idea how old it is. The label looked super vintage. Um, it's very high content of nylon, like it's not the nicest yarn. But it, it, I had it, so I thought this is a good project to go with. It is a sock yarn. So hopefully they will last and not get any holes in this. I mean, I used different yarn for those parts that get holes, but that's irrelevant. Um, I did change the pattern a little bit because the pattern has green uh, leaves, but that would have looked really weird. This green, what do I call it? I don't know if you can see it. Like kind of this bright green on that would have looked really horrible. So I just did two rows of the acorns. And I think they look really nice. Oh, sun's come out. And yeah, then I used the same contrast as I did for here. I did an eye of partridge. And I'm still learning with my uh, colour work because I've made two pairs of colour work socks, both by Stone Knits, and I went, I did 2.25 and then 2.5. But when I did this one, I'm having way more troubles with this one. This one, I did 2.25, then I did 2.5 and it was too tight, so now this is 2.75, and then I go back to 2.25. But these also got super puckery. I have, they're over there, I'm still working on them, give me a second. Here they are. This is my next one, and if you can see they're like major pucker factor, it's all squished. But on the inside, they're, they're loose, like they're fine. They're like all the other colour work projects I've done. No issues. But then, and I was really nervous about this, so when I finished this pair and blocked them, I'm really happy that they do ease out. So I have no idea what the issue is with this one. Why why I need to go up so high and why it's puckering in comparison to all the other things that I've knitted, no problems. Well, there have been different problems. <laughs> so, anything else? I think that's it for this. So yeah, this is my half finished. I'm on the foot now of the second one, which, oh, we'll get again. Yeah, here's the ball. So I've just turned my heel and I'm now working, I've done the decreases and now it's a good, whatever it is, 40, 45 rows of uh, the foot and then I'll do my toe. I still haven't looked up what it's called, did I say last time? I think it's a square toe where you decrease and then you do kitchener stitch at the end. So that's my half finished object. 
and I need some more water. <laughs> My chair is super squeaky, so hopefully you can't hear that and you can't hear the crazy wind outside. And I'm so aware of, I'm slouchy. This is the most uncomfortable chair I think I've ever had. <laughs> So, notes. Haven't really even looked at these. Hopefully I've told you everything. My next, my next project is half, half a fail, half a success. I'm on the fence here. Basically, I'm not going to get any sympathies from you guys, I know. But I didn't swatch. I never swatch because my swatches, as I said earlier, are always so misleading. Like sometimes it'll say 19, sometimes 18, sometimes 21, it, and that is after washing. It just, it's weird. So I've never really had major problems before, so I didn't assume there would be any. And I did think if I'm making a jumper four sizes bigger, then at least the first size would fit me, so any in between would be fine, a bit oversized. Well, I have cast on the Into the Wild jumper with foxes by Tanya Barley. I think her name is The Wool Barrow on Instagram. And I made it for my mum and I did the size 4. And as I got to the end of the yoke, I thought, this is looking rather small. Um, I did check my gauge and it's ridiculously off. First of all, I should have known this because the pattern says the gauge is 17 stitches in 4 inches um, using whatever needle it is, 4 or something, which is the gauge that I get on let lopi. And if you hold two strands of plutilopi, you get let lopi. So it, it should have sent alarm bells off to me that this gauge was going to be wrong because that is the gauge you get with double that yarn. And I've seen another, a few people who've made a project using Plutolopi held single and they get like a fingering weight yarn, which is exactly what I have got. The gauge for mine is 24 stitches in the yoke and like 22 in plain stockinette, 22 or 21. Uh, so there's a substantial difference between the yoke and the body. But that does happen, but when I've gone up a needle size, then it makes the yoke too deep, and then I get like the shoulder, the armpit starts too low. So I kept the needles as they should be, and I'll show you. <laughs> it's, I have a lot of hope riding on <coughs> blocking. It's not finished yet. My voice is going, I must have been talking for a while. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful though? So this is Plutolopi Health Single. And I have listed all the colours in my last one or two videos and <laughs> my voice. And I'm going to list them again underneath because I don't know them off the top of my head. But the weird thing about this is the neckline. It's super weird. It's like having a tunnel. It just sticks up like this. This will never fit to my mother. It is far too small. Size four, I think it's probably even smaller than size one, but it does go over my shoulders. It physically fits me. It's just the neck that's weird. And I do know that when I made my tulip, the neck was really weird and I thought, ooh, this is, terrible, this is never going to work. I blocked it and it was fine. So I have so much hope riding on blocking. Otherwise, somebody will have to show me the best video on YouTube that teaches you how to pick up washed plutolopi, cut it and knit a new neck band. Because it's a really weird neck. <laughs> but it is beautiful. Um, but because it's coming up like a fingering weight yarn instead of a worsted weight, <laughs> it's taking me a really long time and each row takes me like half an hour or something. So it's taking me hours to do the body and because the stitch count is for a size 4, it's like 200 stitches 
Um, yeah, I'm not a fast knitter, and I do love knitting, but knitting single strand flutilope, I'm not a huge fan. I love how it feels, love how light it is, love wearing it, but knitting it is stressful. <laughs> I talked a lot about it um, in my last episode, if you want to know more, um, about this knitting it in this section. And I'm sure when I finished it, and it, it fits, we're, we're praying it fits, then I'll talk again a bit more about it. But for now, here's my progress. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to make it cropped because my mum would have had it much, much longer. But I'm going to have to make her a different one in a different yarn that is not basically fingering weight. <laughs> Maybe I could use Let Lopi, but I think she'd find it too scratchy. Because I don't have a problem, but she does, so... Yeah. <laughs> There's my progress and slight disaster. Hopefully, it will all be fine and it will fit me at least. Because if I had actually started this and my size before making hers, it would have fit a child. Like a very, very small child. So, that is good that I, I put her needs ahead and made her one, although it is now mine. <laughs> but, alas, eventually she will get one. So I'll put you down, and that's all I'm working on. I have lots and lots and lots of plans. I have lots of plans that involve swatching, and um, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but I just don't want to do it. I have a few projects, they're vintage patterns, and they're made in, it's kind of essentially lace weight, really. If any of you have made um, vintage knitting patterns, I'd love to hear from you because every pattern I have basically says two ply, but 1930s, 1940s, two ply is not the same as ours that we have now. And from going by the looks of it, it's the equivalent of a lace weight yarn, which means I have to swatch a 10 centimeter swatch in lace weight and then rip it all out if I didn't get the gauge, and then redo it. And that's basically like knitting a pair of socks, but really, really small ones, like really thin yarn. I'm really not looking forward <laughs> to doing that. Um, I did see, oh, what's her name, Nor Norwenglish? When I see her name written down, I know who it is, but when I actually want to say it out loud, it sounds weird. Norwenglish knitter? Um, she, I just saw on her Instagram, she's put a bunch of swatches together, I think they're swatches, and turning them into a blanket. And I thought that could be an idea, because then it wouldn't be a waste of my time if I make one or two swatches and it takes me a week to make them. Yeah, I, as I said, not a super fast knitter, and also there's going to be purling because it's vintage, so it's backwards and forwards. My gauge is always completely different when purling is involved. So I think it's going to take me more than one attempt to uh, make the swatch. And yeah, I'm really excited to make the knitwear pattern, but knitting all the swatches. I have at least two in lace weight, then I have another one in fingering weight, and I have another jumper that's pattern over there, which is four ply, but I have the uh, woolly knit cone, and I've heard that it doesn't knit up like four ply. It knits up lighter, so I need to swatch that too. So basically, I have a week of swatching ahead of me, and uh, I need to get psyched up for this. And so long as they're all in a similar colour scheme, then maybe a blanket, and then I'll feel productive, like I'm doing something. <laughs> so that is everything that I am doing and have planned. Um, I won't go into anything else because my voice is going, my battery is going, and uh, I've been talking for a bazillion hours, I feel. <laughs> so I'll wrap it up there. And um, yeah, I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed. Bye.